Hey, this is the Daily Overpass. My name is Eric and I make apps. Now today I want to talk about why on earth would anyone work for clients? Last week I got a really interesting email from someone who asked a few questions following the video I did last Sunday about uh, passive income sources. So last Sunday I did the one called how much money I make from apps updated. So I was very you know, trying to be very transparent about showing you the daily revenue spreadsheet that we do each day about how much we make from you know, iTunes Connect, AdMob, uh, Google Play. Facebook audience network and app 11 and just the passive income that comes in on, on a day to day basis. Right? So it's, it's, it's smaller than, than a lot of people's are, but it might be larger than, than some others. So I got a, a, a few really good questions and one, one of them was, uh, and I, I don't want to say his name cause I didn't ask permission. So, uh, since you already have a good base of passive income from your own apps, I'm wondering why you were taking on client work and not just focusing on growing your own apps and passive income. I'm not doing quite as well as yourself yet, but I'm doing well enough to pay the bills. And for me, doing client work would only happen if my back was against the wall. So I guess I'm wondering what motivates you to keep doing client work. And that's a really good question because at least like three or four times a year, I will you know, like we'll have a bad situation or like the stress will just get to me and I'll think that's it. We're not doing client work anymore. We're just going to do our own apps. Right. And, I, and I'll do this just a few, I, uh, you know, it's like, it's predictable. It's like clockwork. You know, the stress just gets too much. We take on more work than we can handle and then just too much. Right. So it could be very stressful. Right. So, and every so often I think maybe I should just, you know, don't, okay, don't tell the team I told you this. Don't tell my team I told you this. But like, I could just, you know, let go of the team. Maybe just me and the designer. We could just sit there and we could just do like, you know, every week we just do apps. You could do the design. I could do the apps, and we could just release these onto the app store on a weekly basis and just sort of build up that passive income base and just do that and just be like a completely creative person and just yeah, not have to deal with people at all or just in terms of, you know maybe deal with people from a psychological perspective, thinking, you know, from analytics, you know, where are they clicking on that kind of stuff, but not having to deal with deadlines and pressures and all that kind of stuff. And that, a lot of you guys are going for that. And I think it's really admirable. Building up passive income is, it just makes total sense to have that freedom, that freedom over your schedule, the freedom over your life, all that kind of stuff. Right. And every so often I think, you know, I just, maybe I should just go that way. And the reason I laughed at the question when I read it was that I thought, you know, yeah, I, I struggle with this all the time. And then I got the other side where I had this other competing vision where I think, you know, I like helping companies and I, and, and in, in individuals, certain individuals, uh, depends on, you know, like you have bad clients and good clients and you, we'll go through that on another video, but some, some that are really demanding and some that are very, uh, appreciative and it's different working for both of them. And a lot of times I'll turn down projects if I think that the, if I think the client seems like it's going to be more, more, more difficult on the, more on the difficult side. Right. So, uh, but yeah, I have this competing vision where I see being able to help more people, being able to help more companies, uh, you know, they come to us with stuff and, you know, sometimes it, I mean, I, I get a lot of satisfaction with being able to help companies improve their processes through the applications. They come, they, you know, they'll come saying, you know, Hey, we, we have this need for this. We have this process where we do this one thing in a, in like in a factory or construction floor, we've done stuff like this. And you know, is there any, any way we can use an app to do that and discuss that with them? and come up with an architecture and build something a little bit larger than something that I would do for the app store. And, and I appreciate that. I like doing that. The money's also a lot better because the, you know, you do something for passive income. You've got a lot of variables in place. Are people going to download this? Can I get the ASO up? All that kind of stuff, which I think is completely doable if you have the time to just completely focus on that kind of stuff. Right? So for me, it's kind of torn in both ways. So we sometimes will, sometimes I will just, stop doing client work and we're, we're going to work on our own apps for the next month or so. And we do that sometimes too. Right. So but it's also building up that. And I think a part of it comes from just having worked in those kind of environments, having worked in corporate environments. I, you know, part of me misses those 
big projects, but <laughs> sometimes I don't miss it. You know, it, and it's, it, it depends kind of where you're on the totem pole. Like doing client work, if you're just the sole developer and you're just sitting there and someone's, you know, where are we with this? Where are we with this? That could be a real drag. And if somebody, you know, like I said, there's two different types of clients. There's some that are really appreciative. You know, they're they're basically borrowing your your knowledge and expertise, and they're they're paying you handsomely for it. Hopefully, if you're doing it right. Oh, and then there's others who think I'm paying you now. Do my bidding, slave. Right? So you, know, and you want to stay away from from that the people with that mentality, right? But I, I do get a lot of of joy from working with clients. I like working with clients. I like going out and getting clients and, and having them come in and being able to, to be the one who, who, who just being able to use all this knowledge that we've gained over the years to, to work on that. But every so often, like this is, a, I keep going because that goal of just have a, that goal of freedom and just having that time freedom and that's really appealing to me. This side of things, the client side of things, I think it's just, it's a case of being able to systematize things enough that we, that we make the whole process easier. Like it's much easier than it was three years ago. So much easier than it was three years ago, but it could be easier. Like there's certain ways that we deal with people, certain ways we deal with uh, providers, all that kind of stuff that, that I, you know, I just handle it so much better. And handling stress better than I did before and, and all that kind of stuff. And I like working on my people skills and all that stuff and growing as a person, but it's not for everyone. In fact, the question, the reason I laughed at the question was because I, I felt like answering, I guess I'm just a glutton for punishment. I guess I'm just into sadomasochism or whatever. I guess I guess I just like the torture of client work. And sometimes it can be really tough. And it's not, you know, when I talk, so sometimes in the videos, I know I, I talk too much about client work and less about ASO. Sometimes I talk too much about ASO and less about client work. And sometimes I'll talk about something in between, right? It's because I'm kind of all over the place there. And, you know, so... Okay, I'm gonna tell you my two competing visions, and this might be a bit embarrassing. I was thinking when I was walking into the office this morning whether or not I was gonna tell you this anyway. Vision number one, having a low cost of living, time freedom, just sit there and be completely creative, work on the apps, all that kind of stuff. Vision number two, we build up a company. We have more than just you know Eric sitting in an office, but we have more developers. We bring in talented people. We bring in the right people for the right projects. And every time we've done that, where it's been more like, you know, I'll, I'll bring in a designer from over here, a developer from over here, we'll bring in an ASO person from over here, we, you know, we'll, we'll bring in you know, all this kind of stuff and, and just coordinating all that so we have like a perfect, a perfect storm of talent in one place. That gives me a big thrill. So I hope that makes a little bit of sense because to, like, to tell you the truth, I'm conflicted all the time. It still doesn't make total sense to me. You know, what, you know just watch this space. Maybe in six months I'll be like, Dude, that's it. I'm just not, you know, we're just doing our own apps anymore. We're going to stop everything else. So anyway, hope that makes sense. Hope that helps. <laughs> so I guess the answer is I don't know. Anyway, so anyway, that's it for today. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.